Always wished it would be his life Memories back to when he was a child Sleeping under starfield skies Hey guys, it's a pretty hot one here today, so I'm going to need a, a beer or two to get through this. Just bear with me. <coughs> so, what I wanted to talk about was our dinghy project. After we got the boat, there wasn't a ton of money left in the key. So, we had to get a dinghy, of course. We realized we're not going to be in big water, we're not on any oceans, uh, we will be on the Great Lakes to a degree but we'll probably be docked most of the time so all of our dinghy use is going to be in small water uh, small lakes, creeks, rivers, that sort of thing so we don't need a hardcore dinghy when I looked at it we don't have dinghy davit system on the boat so I figured there's a thousand, two thousand dollars there to get a five person dinghy we wanted a bigger dinghy for all of our stuff and all of us um, I figured you're four, oh, sorry, you're, you're probably two grand minimum to get a, a dinghy of that size and then to put a motor on it, you're probably another thousand to two thousand dollars. So I figured we're probably four to six thousand dollars by the time it's all said and done, if we're lucky. So that wasn't going to work for us. So I looked around, and what I came up with is on Amazon I found Intex. Intex makes uh, pool toys, inflatable beds, and rafts, and boats, and kayaks, and stuff. And before you laugh at me, you know, we have used Intex uh, floaty toys in the past for camping, and the kids beat the hell out of these things, and uh, these things, I, I was always impressed at how durable these things were. Um, I then went and checked them out on YouTube, and these things have a cult following. Like, there's people putting bimini tops on these, they're putting live wells, wood floors, bench seating, electric trolling motors, gas um, motors on them. So... You know, looking into it, these are purpose-built boats. So, having seen that, I thought, you know what, we're going to try this out. Because the boat itself, it's only 200 bucks, somewhere in there. So if you want to row, 200 bucks, you're in. You can't really, you know, you're not really going to lose much. We wanted to have an electric trolling motor, so we are all in for about 800 bucks. And I thought that was pretty good. Your weakest point is probably your dinghy itself. You know, there's patch kits. But if you had to buy a new dinghy, there's another 200 bucks. Now you're in a thousand, and you're you know you're still pretty cost effective. The reviews I read said you know people own these boats for years and they just keep patching them and they work fine. So they also have three inner air chambers. So if you do get a puncture, it doesn't sink the boat. So I thought that was pretty good as well. So what I realized, these boats are designed to be used and abused and turned into these little electro electric trolling dinghies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all the parts. I'm going to show you the finished product. We're going to have links to all the parts in the, uh, in the description. And I'll just show you what it looks like. We're going to try it out, see how it goes, and document it. And if it works, great. If not, well then I guess we're going to have to suck it up and get a real dinghy. So, so here is the Intex Excursion 5 inflatable boat it's you know supposed to fit five people can take up to uh, over 1300 pounds you can use a one and a half power gas motor on it uh, fishing rod holders all that sort of stuff um, it looks like a decent place to start okay it comes in this box uh, and it also comes with a little bag that you're supposed to be able to put the boat into I think that's going to be a pain in the ass, so we will be putting ours in a big tote. It also comes with a hand pump. Uh, we're not going to use that. We have a generator on the boat, so we're going to use an electric pump, which should uh, inflate it really quickly. However, on the YouTube videos, it does show the uh, hand pump. It pumps it up in about 20 minutes. On a hot day like this, I wouldn't want to be doing that, though. So that's the boat. We then have a battery box, because we're going to have an electric trolling motor, so I needed a battery box. And what I love about this battery box, this is from uh, Newport Vessels. And what you have here is your posts, 
but then you have a USB port over here to charge your phone or tablet for you know if you have Navionics that sort of thing you've got breakers and then here it tells you you know the charge meter over here you have another spot for a cigarette lighter you could also get like a cigarette lighter USB port and put in there and now you can charge two people's electronics while you're out on the water so I thought that was really really cool now to keep the battery charged we have a sun power um, a sooner power solar battery charger 14 watts okay so this is a, a nice uh, portable solar panel and it comes with a variety of connections so you can diversify and be flexible with how you want to use it. You've got this one which is just a test light to tell you it's working. You then have your clamps to put it right on the posts. You can hardwire it if you want or you could use the uh, cigarette lighter um, adapter and then that plugs right into here to keep the battery nice and charged because we have this guy that's going to be sucking all the power out of it. This is a Newport Vessels 55-pound um, thrust trolling motor. It's meant for kayaks. It's only got a 24-inch shaft. It's got a circuit breaker built in so it doesn't fry your motor. Extendable handle. Five forward speeds, three reverse. On a 100 amp hour battery, it should give you, on setting 3, it should give you about 6 hours. Uh, on setting 5, I think it only gives you about 2 hours. So I'm hopeful that with all the use we use in the solar charger, we can keep it um, readily uh, charged. It has a charge indicator on top of it as well. So I like that setup. To mount that to the boat, you have Intex builds their own motor mounts. Um, so again, these boats are not pool toys. They are designed, purposely designed, uh, for this kind of use. So there's your finished product, fully inflated. As you can see, there's uh, lots of room for five people. Uh, definitely lots of room for us and our stuff. It's going to suit our needs perfectly. Uh, you see we have fishing rod holders. There's four of them. I would say they're exactly that. They're just going to hold your fishing rods out of your way they're not going to be used for trolling, they're kind of flimsy. It does come with uh, inflatable seats. We don't use them because they take up a bit of space. The next thing we're going to do to this boat is put um, carpeted wood flooring in it and that's going to give us some stability and some protection when we're fishing so that nothing punctures the bottom of the boat. You see here you got the solar charger hooked up to the battery box, hooked up to the trolling motor. Still lots of room for me to sit beside it. You got your oars on the side. The trolling motor. You see it's fully charged or the battery is fully charged. And there we go. We've got power. You will notice the uh, motor sags a little bit. I've seen that on other videos as well. All they do is get uh, go to the hardware store, get longer pipe, and connect it to there, and that fixes that problem. So, so I'm calling this. I'm calling it a win, a success here. We have a very usable small water dinghy for $800. Suits our needs perfectly. Inflates quickly. Deflates quickly. Uh, stows away in the engine compartment in the boat uh, with no issues so uh, yeah I'm calling this a win we'll keep these updated so here's our floating setup I like it it goes fast enough but you do need the wood floor you definitely need the wood floor for the stability especially with that uh, heavy uh, battery in there but all in all I'm happy with it this is I guess this is dinghy trial number two. Uh, the first dinghy we ordered, uh, we ordered from Intex, um, wasn't happy with it at all. The first time we took it out, got a hole in it, called customer service, and it's months before you hear anything back. And even then, you know, they return your email and they don't even read it. And they, you know, push you off to someone else. So then you send another email 
And then they say after another couple months of waiting, oh, you have to call our customer support team. So then you call the customer support team and no one answers the phone, not even a voicemail. So I wasn't happy. The second time I tried to patch the first hole, but it was on a seam. The second time I took it out, get another hole in an entirely different place. So I did some research and the problem is Intex is one of the only people that uh, make these types of inflatable dinghies. So, you know, my research showed on YouTube and that, that the one I ordered, the Excursion 5, was durable and could be used like we wanted to. I did a little more research and the Intex Excursion 5 was part of their sport boat um, grouping, I guess. And another, the higher up, uh, higher end uh, section is professional boats. They make an Intex Mariner 4, which is heavier duty. It's like three ply. Um, it's got heavier duty rubber rock guards and stuff like that on it. So I thought, you know what? I need this type of dinghy. So I'm going to try and give them a second chance and see if this one does any better. And there's the finished product. So I like that. Um, you can tell right away it's of way better quality than the uh, Excursion 5. One of the things is this wrap around rub rail. So this wasn't on the Excursion 5 and that's added protection against rocks and things like that. It also has a wood floor. Well, it's a plastic floor, which makes it very sturdy for standing up and fishing. Um, and it protects the, uh, the floor from ruptures from fish hooks and things like that. You can also see that the sides are much higher, so that should protect you from spray. Another really cool feature that the Excursion 5 didn't have is this lockable oar so you can't lose your oars um, and it helps you uh, when you are rowing. The inflatable seats are pretty cool. They come out, but I think that's a pretty cool feature there. What I think we're going to do is, in the interest of trying to make it as spacious as possible, I think I'm going to remove my seat here, probably put a little cooler in there, with a uh, with like a cushion on top and then that way my seat doubles as a seat and a cooler um, it just saves space right so uh, it looks like there's enough room here they have a battery bag for you um, but of course we've got a battery box so that'll fit in there nicely um, we do have fishing rod holders the Excursion 5 had four. This one only has two. I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, no, I think this is going to be a definite improvement. Even though it's only four person, I think it's going to suit us perfectly. There you go. In the bottom, you can see there's a, a ribbed added protection there as well. So that if you do hit rocks on the bottom, um, it doesn't rupture. So... Yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Stay tuned, we'll get it uh, all set up with the uh, motor and battery box and have it in the water. And here's the new dinghy in the water, Intex Mariner 4. All of our stuff in there, we're all hooked up. Let's take her for a spin, see how she does. Jackson, how does this new dinghy uh, compare to the old dinghy? It's, uh, it's way better because it has two less holes. You don't really want to be driving with one hole in your mouth. That is uh, very insightful. Thank you. Yeah. So, so what's the final word on the uh, dinghy project? Well, as you guys saw, we started with the Excursion 5. Although the YouTube video showed it should have been durable enough, it wasn't. Uh, maybe we got a lemon. But we had got two holes in our first two trips. Um, it was too flimsy. The sides weren't very high. And you definitely needed a wood floor. Um, 
moving up to the professional line of boats that Intex carries with the Mariner 4, that's what we would choose. As you guys saw, uh, the sides are much higher, much firmer. Uh, we sit on them. We don't even use the inflatable seats. We just sit on the sides. Uh, the plastic floor is perfect for stability, for standing, uh, for our battery. Um, we've had it in some rougher water and it handles perfectly. So if you have a 25 foot to a, uh, even a 33 foot boat where you don't have um, davits, this is a perfect, uh, perfectly doable option. Um, it fits in a tote, stores away. It's not a big deal to, to store it and set it up. Um, price point, with the Excursion 5, we were in for 800 bucks. The Mariner 4 is an extra $200. So all in now, for this dinghy setup, we're about $1,000, okay? So again, looking at the total price point, I think that's good, you know, versus four or six grand. I think this is a good, reasonable option and we've used it all summer and haven't had any issues we like it now with the trolling motor in the weeds you kind of have to stop sometimes and pull the weeds out um it is fast enough if you want to be spending a little more money what we might do is buy another uh, deep cycle battery and put two batteries on the dinghy so that you could always run it at a faster speed for a longer period um, but we're finding everything that we have now works fine. It's just if you want to spend a little more money to trick it out a little more, you certainly could. So anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Intex Mariner 4 is our choice. And uh, any questions, comments, uh, leave it below and uh, subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks.